Okay, so following on from the first part of this tutorial, we've spoken about how the database works, we've sp uh, well, the database structure, we've spoken about how the search itself works, uh, now it's time to actually go ahead and write out the code for this. So you can see at the moment I have just an empty uh, HTML page with only a header tag. Um, which is just says search. So obviously this is entirely up to you. You can integrate this into your own website because the function is going to be in func.inc.php it's going to make it a lot easier for you to integrate it anywhere you want in your website. So essentially what I've done up here, let's just rewrite that out, is I have started a PHP tag and ended one and I've said include and then in inverted commas or single quotation marks I've just included func.inc.php and you can bring that all up onto one line and it just makes everything a bit tidier okay so now that we've included func.inc.php we need to include db.inc.php from func.inc.php so let's go ahead and do exactly the same db.inc.php now in db.inc.php we need to connect to our database so essentially what we're doing is we're making um, func.inc.php accessible on this page but from func we're actually using the search function itself so we need to connect to our database so just to keep our database structure uh, our file structure a little bit easier to follow I've created these three files it's entirely up to you but I do recommend you do it this way so the first thing I'm going to do is use the mysql connect function and this is going to take three parameters and they're all string data the first second and third are um, yeah like I said string data uh, the first is your server so essentially what we're doing with mysql connect is connecting to the uh, mysql server the first is the host which is uh, usually local host then it's root for the my username and then my password is blank so these credentials will most likely be different for you especially if you're using um, paid hosting uh, you're you're gonna find that these uh, perhaps have something appended in front of them however make sure you know how to connect to a database probably before you start this tutorial because we're gonna be going into SQL queries and everything like that so my SQL select DB is next and what this does is select a database that we're going to be working with and you can see that earlier when I was uh, showing you the database my database is search engine so simply I'm going to connect or select search engine okay so now that that's done let's go ahead and run this uh, page in our browser we get no errors which um, more or less all the time means that we've connected to our database so that was successful and what we can do now is start building up the actual form itself so under search header tag what we're going to do is we're going to create a form we're going to keep the action blank because we're submitting to the same page and the method in this case is going to be post we're sending the data as a post data type and we'll end the form there so I'm going to create a couple of paragraph tags just to keep everything nicely spaced out and in here I'm going to create, let's just bring this down a bit, input type equals text uh, because obviously we want to give the user the option to enter some text. Uh, we're going to give this a name of search term uh, or actually let's keep it simple and we'll say keywords. Um, and that's about it for that field, we don't need to uh, do anything else there uh, but we then need a button so immediately afterwards I'm going to create another um, input type and this is going to be submit this time and the value for this is going to be uh, search this is just what is displayed to the user okay so let's go ahead and preview that in our browser you can see that we've got our search box up and our search button whatever we type in here we can then click and the uh, data typed in here is forwarded or sent to back to the same page so remember we left the action blank okay so now that that's done we need to come down a bit and under the form or wherever you want your results to be displayed we create a new uh, PHP um, block if you like and in here we're going to need to create a few checks before we actually process the uh, search to func.inc.php uh, by calling our function so the first thing we need to do is check if this form has been submitted and we do that using the isset keyword 
and this is going to search for dollar underscore post remember we're sending post data and in square brackets and then in um, single quotation marks we need the field name which is keywords okay so now what we're going to do is open a block so with a curly bracket open a block and inside of here uh, we need to actually set this to a uh, a variable that we can use uh, easily so I'm going to create a new variable called keywords and that's going to equal dollar underscore post and then in here keywords so we checked for this post here and now we're setting it to a variable called keywords so now keywords equals whatever the user typed in it's just a lot easier way now we can deal with just this keyword instead of keep referencing this now there are a few security things we need to take into consideration as well as sort of chopping things up a bit uh, just so we make everything a bit nicer now we're later on going to be searching if the users typed anything um, and in the case that they just type a few spaces like so this is going to be recognized as data so what we need to do is we need to use the trim function around this posted variable and what that will do is remove any white space from the left and the right hand side of the keywords so for example if they were to type space space flash space space using the trim this would just be taking this space out taking these spaces out and you'd just be left with flash as well if you were to do dot dot uh, space 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 it would remove all of this and therefore they haven't typed anything so we're, we're basically allowing them not to search for just load of spaces okay so the next thing that we need to take into consideration is HTML entities now what we've actually done is we've uh, in the demonstration in the first part of the tutorial we uh, looked at displaying the search term that they've actually searched for so if you were to be echoing out this data at all you're going to need to make sure HTML entities function surrounds this and the reason for that is simple HTML entities is going to is going to take any HTML data and it's going to store it in its absolute form as in symbol symbol form so instead of um, for example a greater than and then a less than sign with HTML in the middle it actually shows this out as symbols so the less than and the greater than sign would be shown as symbols so if you're not too sure of this go ahead and read up on the HTML uh, entities function have a look at what it does test it out in a separate page and you'll understand why we use this when we're outputting what the users typed in and the next thing is the MySQL real escape string function and what this does is it escapes any um, data that could potentially be used for an SQL injection because we're going to be using this keywords value here to search directly into our database we want to prevent SQL injection so if you're unsure what SQL injection is go ahead and read up on that uh, it's important to bear this in mind when we're allowing the user to type anything in that's going to query our database so now what we want to do is I'm just going to echo out keywords uh, just to test that everything has worked properly so let's refresh the page okay let's go ahead and type in uh, flash for example you can see that that's just translated and echoed out down there now what happens if I type space space flash space space and click search you can see that there's no spaces being appended to this it's trimmed the spaces down if we were to type something like that or that equals that which would be um, a potential SQL injection click search you can see that we've added slashes to this to ensure that it's not translated as a query um, in MySQL so we've protected against these things oh as well as something like um, body BG color equals something so hash no 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 if I was to click search you can see that it's translated as exact uh, HTML uh, let's go ahead and remove um, the HTML entities function just to demonstrate that further and let's paste that back into there and click search and you can see that it's set the background color to black because the HTML has been taken literally rather than displayed as an output so hopefully that's cleared it up for you if you weren't sure what HTML entities does okay let's just add that back in 
Okay, so now that we've got the keywords, we want to create an array which is going to store a list of errors depending on the errors that we might come across. So for example, if the user hasn't typed any data or if the, the search term was too less of characters. So what we're going to do is we're going to be making the uh, limit of or the minimum characters required for the search as three. And the reason for this is if the user was to search for A, obviously there would be a lot of results returned. So we need a minimum um, search term.